JBN, we keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones, and in the news, MP Grange responds to reports, one other gang behind Spanish Town violence. Olivia Babsi Grange, Member of Parliament for St. Catherine Central, says she has not heard in reports some communities in her constituency that the one other gang is behind the latest outbreak of violence in Spanish Town. Fallen two says shooting spree that killed three people. The Jamaica Constabulary Force blamed it on an internal gang feud that began in September of last year. Grange, who is also the Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, toured some areas of the constituency yesterday, along with National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang and Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson. I'm not involved in any gang, so I can't tell if it's a breakaway faction from a gang, she said when questioned on the matter. Once there are incidents that are connected to communities that are in strong support of the Jamaica Labour Party, then the elements that are involved are labelled one order. But what I can tell you, I haven't heard the name one order called in the communities around for a long time. They have been focused on how they can improve their lives. According to Grange, the conflict originated from an adjoining constituency and spilled over into her constituency when persons moved in. A section of the constituency was attacked, and once it happens, then the situation gets tense. Working close with the police, I've tried my best to ensure that there is no reprisal, she said. The Member of Parliament said she condemned the killings and criminal activities taking place. The police commissioner said Tuesday the conflict had its genesis at 31 St. John's Road in the St. Catherine South Central constituency and has since spread to sections of St. Catherine Central, including Railway Lane. Meanwhile, Granger started her social intervention programs in the communities that she claimed are making a difference in the lives of residents. Tuesday night, the police imposed 48-hour curfews in Torspen, Job Lane, 31 St. John's Road and Railway Lane. Another major criminal organization, the Klansman Gang, is also based in St. Catherine. Man shot dead by gunmen at construction site in St. Thomas. On Wednesday afternoon, armed men struck at a construction site in Seaforth, St. Thomas, killing a 34-year-old man. He has been identified as Rupert Miller, a construction worker from Seaforth. According to information received, several workers, including Miller, were constructing a perimeter wall along the York Main Road. Further reports are that about 2.30 p.m., gunmen allegedly invaded the area and opened gunfire at Miller. He was shot multiple times and later pronounced dead. A motive for the killing has not been ascertained. Police investigations are ongoing. Police intercept robbers. Recover stolen gun in St. Andrew South. Swift action by lawmen in the St. Andrew South Division led to the recovery of a stolen firearm on Warrell Avenue, Kingston 19 yesterday, Wednesday, June 15. The incident unfolded about 12.10 p.m. following a report made by a man to the Dwayne Park Police that he was held up and robbed of his licensed firearm, $25,000 cash, bank cards and other documents on Woody Avon Avenue, Kingston 19, by men traveling in a Nissan Latio motor car. While making a report at the station, the complainant received an alert that an ATM transaction was declined from a bank card that was among the items stolen from him. The police acted on this information and went to the location the failed ATM transaction was made. On their arrival, a motor vehicle was seen and the men fled the vehicle on approach of the lawmen. The vehicle was searched and a Colt .45 pistol was recovered, as well as keys, a cell phone and other items. The vehicle was seized by the police. Investigations are ongoing to find the perpetrators involved, the police said. Man fatally shot by police in Crabill, St. Mary, in the comprobing. A man was shot and killed by the police in the community of Crabill in Onota Bay, St. Mary, yesterday. He has been identified as 42-year-old Marlon Bell. The incident has been probed by the Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom. According to Indicom, information from the police is that three cops, acting on information, went to a premises where an exchange of gunfire ensued. It was reported that a man was subsequently seen with gunshot injuries. The police reported the recovery of a gun. The injured man was taken to hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Indicom says the cops involved in the shooting provided initial accounts to its investigators and were served with notices to submit statements and attend interviews in relation to the incident. The alleged recovered gun as well as the weapons of the cops were processed and will be transported to the government forensic lab for testing, Indicom said. Brother recovering after throat slashed by a sibling. A long-standing domestic dispute between two brothers in Rockall, St. Andrew, 
turned physical on Tuesday, with a knife used to slash the throat of the elder sibling. The injured brother, who is recovering, was not the aggressor, residents said. The dispute reportedly stems from the younger brother's desire to obtain a property owned by his older sibling. The injured man reportedly received eight stitches after he was rushed to hospital. The younger sibling, according to the residents, has reportedly been making threats and directed his wrath to his brother's children and spouse. Him say go kill me and chum in a pit on the saw, and when him done him go light the house of fire, a relative close to the incident said. The brothers reside on the same property in separate but identical homes. Is the longest him ever their street? A resident said of the younger siblings' run-ins with the law. Hours after the incident, residents claimed that he was seen casually walking around in Red Hill Square. The police said that the accused man, who is known to them, is being sought. The drama started with stones being thrown onto the house by the younger sibling, who then destroyed a water tank in the yard. He reportedly left the premises and attacked his brother at a development site nearby. Me not like when live with him, big brother. Everybody said that. I told them the father of one get this house and the other get that house, a neighbor said. The relatives said the children were traumatized after they saw their father in despair and their uncle behaving boisterously. The children them said them scared, them crying, a family member said. The St. Andrew North Police say they are probing the incident. Men accused of Manchester robbery caught in Santa Cruz. Quick action by the St. Elizabeth Police resulted in the arrest of four men within hours of them suspected to have robbed several people in neighboring Manchester yesterday. A gun was also seized. The men allegedly carried out an armed robbery in Hatfield District, Manchester, about 2 p.m. A police statement said last evening there were no further details of the incident. Cops in St. Elizabeth received information and shortly after intercepted a Nissan AD wagon that the men were reportedly traveling in on the Santa Cruz main road in the parish. The police arrested all four occupants. During a search of the vehicle, a 9mm pistol and items including cell phones allegedly stolen from the individuals in Manchester were recovered. The suspects are from Spanish town addresses in St. Catherine, the police say. Justice Minister urged Jamaicans to provide evidence to courts. Minister of Justice Delroy Chalk is once again encouraging Jamaicans to come forward and not only report crimes but provide evidence to the courts. Chalk was speaking at a National Judiciary Education Symposium on Thursday at the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court. The minister's comments came days after multiple people were shot and killed in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, as well as the parish's courthouse being set on fire. If you see something happening, you must have the courage to be able not only to give the information, but you must be prepared to provide the evidence because the courts cannot just work on information and intelligence. The courts work with evidence, and we Jamaicans are too afraid, Chuck said in his presentation. They feel that they must see no evil. You're no evil, but then no evil is occurring, and someone must be able to resolve those evils, he continued. He also added that the government is going to solve the problems of indiscipline, lawlessness, corruption, criminality, and other problems that plague the country. Every single Jamaican must take a stand and speak up. Wrongdoers must be exposed. And every single Jamaican must expose all those who are creating the indiscipline and the lawlessness on our roads, Chuck urged. On Tuesday, at least three people were confirmed dead after a gunman killed a man known as Mackerel and another man in the Spanish town market, while multiple others were shot and injured. Jamaica reports 152 new COVID cases, two deaths. Jamaica reported 152 new cases of COVID-19 and two fatalities on Wednesday. According to the latest statistics from the Ministry of Health and Wellness, this pushed the total number of cases of the virus since the start of the pandemic to 141,026 and the death toll to 3,093. Of the newly reported cases, there were 93 females and 59 males with ages ranging from 18 days to 95 years. The cases were recorded in St. Catherine 50, Kingston and St. Andrew 43, Clarendon 12, St. Thomas 12, St. Elizabeth 9, Manchester 7, St. Mary 7, Westmoreland 4, St. James 3, Hanover 2, St. Anne 2 and Portland 1. Meanwhile, the latest deaths are a 60-year-old man and an 88-year-old man, both from St. Catherine. Another death was also reported as coincidental. The country also recorded 164 new recoveries, bringing the total number of recoveries to 88,364. The positivity rate for the latest round of testing is 24.6%.
There are 120 people hospitalized, four of them critically ill. There are 2,550 confirmed active cases on the island. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.